Hey guys, gather round. I don't know if you all know what today is, but it's a pretty significant day. Well, it's a kid finally going to get himself an intercept today. <laughs> oh God, yes, please let that be what's happening. Are you going to send me, put me in, coach? No, kids, sorry, but today is the 80th anniversary of the, uh, well, as the kids would say, dunk on Germany day. I, I want to get mad, yeah, but I, I deserve it. It's that goddamn mustache mania. Yeah. You get what you deserve. So I figured the easiest way to go over this, instead of me trying to paraphrase it, is why not talk to some of the guys who were there. Well, thank you, Buff. It's always good to spend time with you youngins again. So as Buff was saying, June 6th, 1944, I was there. I was there before. I was there after. People think that it was just a one-day operation. It was months, years of planning into making these things happen. Me and the B-17, oh, we spent many a night bombing the living shit out of those Germans on those beaches. He's right, you know. We dropped hundreds of tons of munitions. The only thing we had going for us is, is the Germans had expanded too quickly. They didn't have the manpower to man all of their defenses, so we used everything we could to try and convince them that that's not where we were going to attack. By the time June 5th, 1944 had come around, two million troops were in the United Kingdom waiting to storm those beaches in France. Originally, I was a, a civilian airliner. They, they repurposed me because they needed somebody who could carry a lot of people. And so we went in, and I was responsible for dropping 18,000 airborne troops over top of Normandy to support the assault of the beach. Pardon me for interrupting, but I know it wasn't just a bomber and personnel carrier mission. I need to talk to the interceptors. Kid, I love you, but you'll talk to whoever the fuck I say you can talk to. Don't interrupt. <laughs> That's all right there, young buff. He knows not what he asks for. And we brought somebody here to help teach him. Somebody who was his equivalent back in 1944. Oh, those Merlin engines. They were something. And the Germans, oh, they hated those things. Kid, how was you? How was you before you were a twinkle in some defense contractor's eye? They couldn't fly like me. They couldn't climb like me. They couldn't fight like me. But by God, they could die by me. How many intercepts did you get? <laughs> Too many to count, kid. Heck, a lot of us up there, we ran out of room on our fuselage to put tally marks. Oh, I have one of those. It's not much. It's just a balloon. But Great Grandpa Mustang, do you, do you think I'll ever get more? Here's the thing you gotta understand, kid. War is not a fun thing. It's always nice to look back and see the numbers and feel real proud of yourself for winning. But in reality, those poor young men were running into a meat chopper that day. And the world would have been better off if we never had to do it in the first place. We do what our country asks us to do when they ask us to do it. I take no pride in the numbers. Those are tally marks out of necessity, not out of want. Remember that, kid. <laughs> 